I'm Alex, a 25-year-old who dreams of becoming a writer. I live in a small town that doesn't feel like the best place to chase my dreams. My dream? To make a living by writing, to see my stories in bookstores, loved by readers, and maybe even considered great literature someday. But I've learned that dreams often come with disappointments and difficulties. Every morning, my routine was predictable. A hot cup of coffee, a blank screen on my laptop, and the disappointment of rejection letters. It felt like publishers were all saying the same thing. This isn't right for us. My mailbox was filled with these letters, each one feeling like a burial ground for my hard work and creativity. On a rainy afternoon, feeling downhearted like the gloomy sky, I found myself soaked and seeking shelter from both the rain and my own feelings. I stumbled upon a cozy coffee shop a comforting place filled with the smell of freshly brewed coffee. It was there, in this unexpected refuge, that I met Lily. Lily had a smile that was like sunshine, which was very different from the stormy weather outside. She worked as a barista, with her apron having coffee stains and her eyes showing a friendly curiosity. While making my drink, she casually asked why I was so wet, and this made me share with her about my problems. My dreams kept getting turned down, and I felt really disheartened. What amazed me wasn't only her eagerness to hear me out, but also the sincerity in her words when she replied. You know Alex, every writer goes through rejection. It's like a tradition almost. But what if you tried a new approach to share your stories? Maybe directly with readers? Her idea made me feel a bit hopeful. Self-publishing? Starting a blog? Thoughts swirled in my head as I sipped my coffee. But won't nobody notice? I asked, feeling unsure. Lily's laughter was like sunshine making me feel better and getting rid of my worries. Isn't it better to say something, even if nobody hears it? When you speak, there's a chance someone might listen. Keep going, Alex. Maybe your way isn't through a big company, but one you make for yourself. That talk changed everything. It wasn't just the advice but also Lily's strong belief that maybe I was doing things the wrong way. When I left the coffee shop that day, I didn't just feel energized from the coffee, I felt like I had a new reason to keep going in a starting plan. I began a blog, a basic website where I could share my stories without needing a big company's approval. Every time I posted, it felt like sending a little paper boat into the sea delicate but full of hope. Gradually, people started reading. At first, there were only a few, like drops of water in a big, dry desert, but their comments were like finding an oasis, making me feel refreshed and motivated. Lily was my first and most supportive reader. She gave me advice, helped me find mistakes and cheered for every story like it was the best. Her support was like having a strong wind helping me fly, urging me to keep writing, improving, and taking risks. Our talks at the coffee shop became a regular thing, changing from talking about my writing to chatting about books, art, and life. In these chats, I found out Lily wasn't just good at making coffee, she was also really wise. She read a lot and understood people well, so her advice was always helpful. We worked together on my stories, talking about the main ideas, making the characters more interesting, and improving the storyline. Lily was really good at seeing what my stories could become and helping me find new ideas I hadn't thought of. With her help, my writing started to change. 
It became more exciting and detailed, and little by little, the blog that had started quietly began to get more attention. More and more people started to give me feedback on my stories, going from a few to a lot. Even people I didn't know said they liked my stories and couldn't wait for the next one. It might not have been a huge success, but for me, it felt really important. It was the first time I felt like people were really paying attention to what I wrote, and it made me feel like a real writer. My dream, which had seemed like it would never happen, started to become real. It wasn't the way I thought it would be, with big companies liking my work, but it was my own path. I made it happen by never giving up, being strong when things were tough, and with the help of a woman who believed in me even when I didn't. Lily's clever ideas to help me weren't big things, but small steps that I could actually do. She believed in the process, in talking directly to readers, and in not giving up. She showed me that often, the hardest thing isn't what other people say but giving up on ourselves. As I kept writing, sharing, and learning, I understood that every big achievement starts with a small belief, believing that no dream is too small, no effort wasted, and no story unimportant. Because of Lily, my dream that I thought would never happen became real. It shows that the only real failure is giving up. And so, our story started, not with big celebrations because we succeeded right away, but with the determination to keep dreaming, keep writing, and keep believing, even when nobody seemed to care. Because in the end, what matters isn't getting lots of applause from everyone, but having the bravery to follow our dreams, step by step. As time passed, my journey continued with my dream always in my mind, never fading. The money problems I faced became bigger, like dark clouds hovering over everything I wanted to do. Every morning, when I woke up to my old laptop and the quiet start of a new day, I felt the reality of my situation like a heavy storm cloud above me. I worked long hours at the library under bright lights. The pay wasn't much just enough to pay for rent and bills, but not much else. I mostly ate instant noodles and drank tap water, showing how much I was willing to give up to focus on being creative. One evening while we were chatting over cold coffee, Lily noticed I looked worried. She gently asked me what was wrong, and I finally admitted my concerns. My rent was going up, my savings were running out and I was worried about not being able to write anymore if things didn't get better. Lily listened carefully, understanding how I felt. Then, she smiled brightly, like the sun breaking through clouds. Alex, why not use your writing skills in different ways? The internet has lots of opportunities for talented writers. You could write content for websites, help edit, or even start a blog for businesses. There's so much you could do. The idea surprised me and didn't fit with the plans I had for my life. But considering how desperate my situation was, it started to make sense. Lily could tell I was unsure, so she painted a picture with her words, showing me a world where I could still follow my dreams while also making enough money to live comfortably. With Lily's help, I tried something new by joining freelance websites. I shared the stories I cared about and wrote blog posts. At first, I didn't hear back from many clients, and it felt discouraging. But Lily kept supporting me, which gave me hope even when things seemed uncertain. Then, something exciting happened. A nearby small business needed someone to write for their website. It wasn't the most thrilling task, nothing like the stories I dreamed of writing, but it was a writing job, and they would pay me for it. 
I worked hard on it, putting all my effort into making the writing engaging, even though it was about selling things. Getting paid for that first job wasn't a lot of money, but it meant so much to me. It wasn't just about the money, it showed me that I could handle challenges and change. Thanks to Lily's advice, I found a way to make money while still working towards my dream. As time passed, I got more freelance work. Working on different projects helped me become a better writer. Each project taught me something new about how to write for different readers and styles. Having more money made it easier for me to chase my dream of being a successful writer. One evening, as Lily and I talked over our usual coffee, now cold, I thought about my journey. I had been really scared that I might lose my dream because of money problems. But now, I realized I was still moving forward. It wasn't luck that got me through tough times, but my determination and the encouragement of a friend who never stopped believing in me, even when I doubted myself. Lily, I said, feeling thankful. You've helped me see a way forward that I couldn't see before. It's a path where what I love to do and how I make a living fit together. Thank you for believing in me and helping me through tough times. Her smile showed me the way, always bright and steady. Alex, your talent was there all along. I just helped you see it. As we said goodbye that evening, with the streets lit up by the soft glow of streetlights, I understood that the journey of writing many words wasn't only about reaching a goal, but also about the roads we decide to take. With Lily's advice as my guide, I was learning to find my way through challenges, my dream not put off anymore but changing and growing, like the endless sea. After solving my money problems with Lily's help, a new problem appeared. I couldn't think of what to write next. This is called a creative block, and it happens when a writer cannot find new ideas. Every time I sat down to write, my mind was empty. It was very frustrating. One day, I told Lily about my problem. I said, I don't know what to do. I want to write, but when I try, nothing comes out. Lily thought for a moment and then said, Maybe you need a change. Let's go somewhere new this weekend. Lily had a great idea. She knew a place in the countryside, very quiet and beautiful, perfect for thinking and writing. It was a small house surrounded by trees and nature. It's a perfect place for you to find new ideas, she said. We went there on Saturday morning. The place was as beautiful as Lily described. There were green fields, tall trees, and a small river. It was very peaceful. Lily said, take your time. Walk around, relax, and don't worry about writing. Let the ideas come to you. I did what Lily suggested. I walked around, watched the birds, and listened to the sound of the river. Slowly, I felt more relaxed. I wasn't thinking about my problems or feeling frustrated. I was just enjoying the moment. Then, something amazing happened. As I was sitting by the river, Watching the water flow, an idea for a story popped into my head. It was clear and exciting. I quickly went back to the house and started writing. The words came out easily, and I wrote for hours. By the end of the weekend, I had written a lot. I felt very happy and thankful for Lily's help. She smiled and said, Sometimes, all you need is a little change to see things differently. When we got back to town, I continued writing with new energy. My creative block was gone, thanks to the trip and Lily's smart idea. 
I learned that it's important to take breaks and find new places to get inspired. After finding my inspiration again, I was very excited. I wrote many stories and shared them on my blog. People who read my blog liked the new stories. I was happy and wrote even more. But then, something hard happened. A person who writes about books on the internet read my stories and didn't like them. They wrote a review that was not nice. They said my stories were boring and not good. This made me very sad. I thought maybe I was not a good writer after all. I told Lily about the bad review. I said, maybe I should stop writing. Someone said my stories are not good. Lily listened to me, but she did not agree. Lily said, one person's opinion does not mean your stories are bad. You have many readers who love what you write. And even the best writers get bad reviews sometimes. I knew Lily was trying to make me feel better, but I still felt sad. Then Lily had an idea. Let's learn from this, she said. We can read the review together and see if there is anything helpful. And then, I know a writer who teaches writing. Maybe you can meet him and get advice. I thought Lily's idea was good. We reviewed the bad feedback again. This time, we tried to find if there was anything I could learn from it. We found a few things I could do better. Then, Lily arranged for me to meet the writer who teaches. His name was Mr. Thomas. He was very nice and listened to my stories. He gave me good advice on how to make my writing stronger. Meeting Mr. Thomas helped me a lot. He showed me that even when someone does not like your work, you can still learn and improve. I felt much better and started writing again. This time, I used what I learned to make my stories even better. I was very thankful for Lily's help. She showed me that facing criticism is part of being a writer. And that with help and learning, I could overcome this challenge too. After overcoming the challenge with the critics, I faced a new problem, but this time it was closer to home. My family did not understand why I spent so much time writing. They thought I should find a real job one that would guarantee a steady income. They were worried about my future and often told me, writing won't pay your bills. This made me feel very sad and alone. I knew they wanted the best for me, but it hurt that they didn't believe in my dream. I talked to Lily about it, feeling lost. They just don't see how much writing means to me, I said. Lily listened and then said, Maybe it's time they saw your writing through the eyes of your readers. She had a creative idea. Let's organize a small event at the coffee shop. You can read some of your stories, and we'll invite your family and some of your blog readers. I was nervous about the idea, but Lily was confident it would help. We prepared for the event selecting the best stories I had written. Lily helped me practice reading them out loud, giving me tips on how to share my stories with emotion and confidence. The day of the event arrived. My hands were shaking, and my heart was racing. My family came, looking curious but skeptical. Some of my blog readers also came, which made me feel supported. I started reading my stories. At first, I was very nervous, but as I looked up, I saw the audience listening, really listening. Some were smiling, others looked moved. By the end of the reading, the room was filled with applause. My family looked surprised but also proud. After the event, many people came to talk to me, 
including my family. They said they didn't realize how good my writing was or how much it meant to people. We're proud of you, my parents said, and we'll support your writing from now on. I was so happy I could hardly speak. Lily's idea had worked. She showed me that sometimes people need to see your dream in action to understand it. That day, I not only won my family's support but also felt more confident in my path as a writer. Lily smiled at me, and I knew I couldn't have done it without her. See, she said. They just needed to see your world through your words. With my family now supporting my writing, I felt stronger and more motivated than ever. But soon, I encountered another big challenge. I found out about a writing contest that seemed perfect for me. The winner would get their story published in a popular online magazine. It was a chance I couldn't miss. However, there was a problem. The contest had a very tight deadline. I only had two weeks to write a new story, and it had to be my best work ever. I panicked. I don't think I can do this, I told Lily. It's too much pressure. Lily, as always, had a smart plan. Let's break it down, she said. You need a schedule. Write a little bit every day, and I'll help you keep track of your progress. Lily helped me make a writing calendar. We planned what I would write each day. She also suggested I set small goals, like writing a certain number of words every day. And don't forget to take short breaks, she added. They're important too. With Lily's help, I started writing. The first few days were hard. I kept worrying I wouldn't finish in time. But Lily encouraged me. She read what I wrote each day and gave me feedback. Her advice made my story better and kept me going. Every day, I followed the schedule and met my small goals. Slowly, the story began to take shape. I started to believe I could actually do this. Lily's plan was working. As the deadline got closer, I worked harder. Lily was there for me, cheering me on. Finally, after two intense weeks, I finished my story. I submitted it to the contest just in time. I felt relieved and proud. I had written a story I was happy with, thanks to Lily's support and the plan we made together. I couldn't have done it without you, I told her. Lily smiled. You did the writing, Alex. I just helped you see that you could. A few weeks later, I received amazing news. My story won the contest. It would be published in the online magazine. I was overjoyed. It was a big win for me, and it proved that with hard work, support, and a good plan, I could achieve my goals. That experience taught me a lot. I learned how to manage my time, work under pressure, and believe in myself. And I saw once again how important Lily's support was. She helped me face a big challenge and come out victorious. Winning the writing contest was a high point for me. My story was published, and more people were visiting my blog to read my work. I felt like I was finally making progress toward my dream. However, just when things seemed to be going well, I faced a new unexpected challenge. One morning, I found an email in my inbox from another writer accusing me of stealing their story idea. They claimed that my contest-winning story was too similar to something they had published on their own blog a year ago. I was shocked and scared. I had never read their story, and my idea came purely from my own imagination. 
I didn't know what to do. The thought that people might believe I was a thief, stealing other writers' ideas, made me feel sick. I told Lily about the accusation, and she could see how upset I was. We'll figure this out together, she assured me. Let's start by reading the other story to see how similar it really is. We read the other writer's story together, and although there were some broad similarities in the theme, the stories were clearly different in details, execution, and style. Lily helped me draft a calm and respectful response to the writer, explaining that any similarity was purely coincidental and highlighting the differences between our stories. Lily also suggested that I write a blog post about the situation, explaining it to my readers and affirming my commitment to originality and honesty in my writing. Transparency is important, she said. Your true readers will understand and support you. Following Lily's advice, I took the steps to clear my name. The response from the community was more supportive than I could have imagined. Many readers and fellow writers offered words of encouragement and shared their own stories of being misunderstood. The other writer eventually replied, admitting that after seeing my detailed explanation and the differences laid out, they believed the similarity was indeed a coincidence. They apologized for the accusation, and I graciously accepted, glad to put the whole ordeal behind me. This experience taught me the importance of handling accusations with grace and the value of open communication. It also showed me, once again, how crucial Lily's support and smart thinking were in navigating through tough situations. Her presence made me stronger and more capable of dealing with the challenges that came my way. After clearing up the misunderstanding about my story, I felt relieved and ready to focus on my writing again. However, life had another challenge in store for me. One evening, as I was working on a new piece that I was particularly excited about, my computer crashed. In an instant, everything went black. Panic set in as I realized I hadn't backed up my work for weeks. I might have lost not only my new story but also other important documents and drafts. I tried everything I could think of to revive my computer, but nothing worked. The next day, I took it to a repair shop, hoping for good news. The technician's assessment was bleak, my hard drive had failed, and the data recovery was uncertain. I was filled with disappointment. Feeling defeated, I met Lily at the coffee shop and shared what had happened. Seeing my distress, she immediately sprang into action, offering not just sympathy but practical solutions. First, let's see what the technician can recover, she suggested optimistically. And then, we'll work on reconstructing your lost work from any notes or outlines you still have. It's going to be okay. Lily's confidence was contagious. She reminded me of the importance of regularly backing up my work in the future to avoid such losses. It was a hard lesson learned, but her proactive approach helped shift my focus from what I had lost to what could be salvaged and how to prevent similar issues. Thanks to Lily's encouragement, I began to piece together my lost story from memory and the few notes I had. It was a challenging process, but to my surprise, the story began to take on a new life. Parts that I had been unsure about in the original draft now flowed better, and new ideas emerged as I worked to fill in the gaps. A few weeks later, the technician called with good news they had been able to recover some of the data from my failed hard drive. While not everything was saved, it was more than I had hoped for after the initial diagnosis. With the recovered files and the work I had redone, 
I found myself in a better position than before the crash. This experience with my computer crash and the loss of my work taught me several valuable lessons. The importance of backing up my work was the most obvious one, but I also learned that setbacks can lead to unexpected improvements in my writing. Most importantly, I was reminded of the strength found in support and friendship. Lily's unwavering belief in me and her practical help were the beacons that guided me through this challenge. With my work recovered and my latest story completed, thanks to Lily's invaluable support during the technology crisis, I faced a new challenge, getting my story out there. Despite having a small but loyal readership on my blog, I knew this story had potential to reach a wider audience. The problem was, I had no idea how to promote it effectively. Marketing was a world away from writing, and I felt like I was drowning in unfamiliar waters. During one of our strategy sessions at the coffee shop, I shared my concerns with Lily. I believe in this story, but I don't know how to make sure others get the chance to read it. I admitted, feeling somewhat discouraged. Lily, with her talent for seeing opportunities where I saw obstacles, suggested leveraging social media to create a buzz around my new story. Let's think outside the box, she said, her eyes alight with ideas. Why not create a series of posts, each giving a sneak peek into the story? We can use intriguing quotes create hashtags, and even ask your readers to share their thoughts and predictions. Her suggestion sounded exciting but also daunting. I was familiar with social media, of course, but using it as a tool for promotion was new territory for me. Sensing my hesitation, Lily offered to help me plan and execute the campaign. Together, we brainstormed a schedule of posts, selected compelling quotes from my story, and designed simple but eye-catching graphics. As the campaign kicked off, I watched in amazement as engagement on my social media profiles began to grow. Lily's strategies for interaction, like posing questions related to the story's themes and encouraging readers to tag friends, were working. People were not only commenting and sharing the posts, but also expressing excitement about reading the full story. We organized an online launch event for my story, thanks to Lily's help. We held a live reading on social media, where I shared parts of the story and answered questions from the audience. It turned out to be more successful than I expected attracting new viewers and generating even more interest in the story. This experience with promoting my story taught me the power of effective marketing and the importance of engaging with readers in creative ways. It also reinforced how critical Lily's role had become in my journey as a writer. Her insight into strategies for reaching an audience, coupled with her unwavering support, had once again helped me navigate through unfamiliar territory. Most importantly, I learned that promoting my work wasn't just about drawing attention to it, it was about connecting with readers, sharing experiences, and building a community around my writing. Thanks to Lily's guidance, I was becoming not just a better writer but a more confident promoter of my work. The promotional campaign for my story was a success, introducing my writing to new readers and deepening my connection with existing fans. Yet, as the excitement settled, I found myself struggling with an unexpected feeling, isolation. The more time I spent writing and managing my growing online presence, the more disconnected I felt from the world around me. My days were consumed by screens, and interactions were limited to comments and likes. The tangible presence of people, their voices, and their warmth seemed to slip through my fingers like sand. One evening, feeling particularly low, 
I opened up to Lily about this persistent sense of solitude. I'm grateful for the success and the readers, I explained, but I miss real human connection. It's like I'm surrounded by voices, but no one is truly there. Lily listened intently, her face reflecting deep thought. After a moment, she said, You've built a community online, Alex. Now, let's bring that community into the real world. How about we organize a meetup for local writers and readers? It could be a place to share stories, ideas, and just enjoy each other's company. The idea immediately lifted my spirits. I was used to chatting online, so the thought of a real-life gathering hadn't crossed my mind. Feeling enthusiastic about the idea, we began planning. Lily, with her boundless energy and organizational skills, took the lead on finding a place and spreading the word through my blog and social media channels. The day of the meetup arrived with a mix of nerves and anticipation. I was anxious about attendance and unsure if the online bond would extend to face-to-face -face interaction. But as people began to arrive, my fears quickly dissolved. Readers of my blog, local writers curious about the event, and even some of Lily's friends from the coffee shop filled the room with a buzz of conversation and laughter. The meetup was more than just a gathering, it was a celebration of community and creativity. We shared stories, not just in written form but through the spoken word, with impromptu readings and lively discussions about writing, inspiration, and the challenges of the creative process. The sense of isolation that had weighed on me lifted, replaced by a feeling of belonging and shared passion. After the event, Lily and I sat together, reflecting on the success of the evening. See, she said with a smile. You're not alone in this. There's a whole world of people who understand and share your passion. Sometimes, you just need to step out from behind the screen to see it. The meetup became the first of many each gathering strengthening the connections within our local community of writers and readers. Through Lily's suggestion, I learned how to balance my online and offline writing activities. It wasn't just about being active online, it was also about building real-life relationships that motivated and supported me. Lily's wisdom had once again guided me through a challenge showing that although writing often feels like a lonely road, it can also be filled with friendship. With Lily's help, we changed the feeling of being alone into a group effort, where everyone's ideas made a beautiful song of creativity and friendship. The gatherings became a source of joy and inspiration, filling my life with the camaraderie I had missed. However, as I sat down to work on my next big project, an unexpected visitor crept in. Doubt. This wasn't the external doubt I'd faced before, from critics or family, but something more insidious, a voice whispering from within. I've had some success, I confessed to Lily one afternoon, but what if that's all it is? What if I can't replicate it? What if the best is behind me? It was the classic fear of experiencing a decline, the worry that my next work wouldn't live up to the expectations set by my previous successes. Lily listened, her expression understanding. It's normal to feel this way, she said gently. Every writer faces these doubts. But you can't let them define you or your work. Remember why you started writing in the first place. Her words provided comfort, but the doubt still weighed on me like a shadow. Recognizing my ongoing challenge, Lily proposed an idea. Why don't we co-write a story, she suggested. It could be a fun way to blend our ideas and shake off this fear. 
Plus, I've got a few ideas that I think you'll like. The thought of writing with Lily excited me. It was an opportunity not just to create together, but also to learn from her unique perspective. We decided on a theme that we both liked and began brainstorming. The process was refreshingly collaborative, with each session sparking new ideas and directions for our story. As the story took shape, my doubt began to fade. Working with Lily, I was reminded of the joy in storytelling, the thrill of creating worlds and characters from nothing. The fear of not living up to past successes was replaced by the excitement of exploring new narrative possibilities. When we finally shared our Corriton story on my blog, the response was overwhelmingly positive. Readers appreciated the fresh approach and the blend of our styles. The success of our collaboration was a testament to the creative potential that lies in partnership and mutual support. Through this experience, Lily helped me conquer my inner doubts. She showed me that creativity is not a finite resource, but a well that can be replenished through collaboration, exploration, and, most importantly, remembering the love for storytelling that led me to this journey. The lesson was clear, doubt is a natural part of being creative, but it shouldn't stop us from being inventive. Instead, we should recognize it, face it, and let it be used as a stepping stone towards new creative projects. With Lily's help, I had navigated through the unclear waters of self-doubt and emerged with a renewed confidence in my ability to tell stories that resonate and inspire. Together, we had turned a period of uncertainty into an opportunity for growth and discovery. In the coffee shop, filled with memories and shared secrets, I decided to share my new idea with Lily. Surrounded by the gentle noise of people and coffee, I leaned in and shared my thoughts, feeling both excited and nervous. What if we take all our experiences, all the ups and downs, and turn them into something real? I asked, waiting anxiously for her response. Lily's eyes lit up, showing she was as excited as I was. She nodded, not just agreeing but promising to join me in this new challenge. We were going to take all our hard times and turn them into a story, a story that might inspire others. It felt like we were about to turn our struggles into something valuable. In the following weeks, we threw ourselves into writing. Working together, our partnership grew even stronger. We remembered the good times and the bad, carefully adding them to our story. Writing about these memories felt healing, and with each writing session, our dreams seemed closer. But our journey wasn't smooth. We faced a big setback when we lost a part of our work due to a computer issue. It felt like our efforts were slipping away. But Lily had been smart, keeping backups of our work. Thanks to her foresight, we recovered our lost chapters. This challenge made us even more determined to finish our story. After overcoming this hurdle, we felt a renewed commitment to our project. We had faced a significant challenge together and come out stronger. Now, each word we wrote felt like a step toward sharing our journey with the world. Our project wasn't just about writing a story, it was about proving that we could overcome obstacles and create something meaningful. With new determination, we decided it was time to share our work with the world. We wanted to find a publisher who would help us bring our story to a wider audience. With our completed manuscript in hand, we began the search for someone who would see the value in our work. Seeking a publisher was more challenging than we anticipated. We hoped they would see the potential in our story, but instead, we faced rejection after rejection. 
Each mill made us doubt ourselves and our story. Feeling disheartened by the continuous rejections, Lily came up with a new plan. Why don't we ask our blog readers for help, she suggested. It was a glimmer of hope in a difficult time. Rather than giving up, we decided to try crowdfunding. This way, people who already enjoyed our writing could help us make our book a reality. Launching the crowdfunding campaign felt like embarking on a new adventure. We worked hard to create a campaign page that shared our story and the essence of our book. We also made a video to connect with our readers personally, showing them who we are and why we're passionate about this project. Asking for help was intimidating, but we hoped our readers would want to support us. At first, the response was overwhelming. It was incredible to see the support and read messages from people who believed in our dream. However, after some time, the initial excitement faded, and our campaign began to stall. Watching the support dwindle was disheartening, and we worried we might not reach our goal. Just when things seemed most challenging, a heartfelt post from a dedicated reader turned things around. They shared how much our writing meant to them and encouraged others to support our campaign. This post spread across social media, bringing a new wave of support and donations. It was a reminder of the impact our writing had on others and gave us the push we needed to reach our goal. With the help of our readers, we met our crowdfunding goal. It was a moment of relief and victory. Despite the doubts and challenges, we hadn't given up. In the end, the support of our readers helped us achieve our dream. As we celebrated our crowdfunding success, an unexpected opportunity arose. A major publishing house that had previously rejected us now offered us a deal to publish our book. The offer was incredibly generous, far beyond what we had ever imagined. It was a surprise and a dream come true. Negotiating the deal was a new challenge. We needed to ensure we kept creative control of our story. It was crucial for us that the heart of our book remained unchanged. After many discussions, we reached a deal that respected our vision and promised to bring our story to a wider audience. Signing the contract was a surreal moment, marking the end of one journey and the beginning of another. Seeing the money from the deal in our account was a tangible sign of our achievement. It felt like a validation of all our hard work. In the calm that followed, Lily and I reflected on our journey. We've come so far, Lily said with a smile. And there's still so much more ahead, I replied. It was a quiet moment, but it felt full of promise. We knew our story wasn't over yet. There were more adventures and stories waiting for us. Leaving the coffee shop that day, we felt hopeful about the future. Our journey from sharing a dream to holding a published book had been long and filled with obstacles. But we had made it, thanks to our perseverance and the incredible support of our readers. And we were ready for whatever came next. As I reflect on our journey to this remarkable milestone, I can't help but recognize that the heart of our success lies not just in the words we've written or the challenges we've overcome, but in the unwavering presence of Lily. Her foresight in backing up our work, her ingenious idea to turn to crowdfunding, and her steadfast belief in our story during moments of doubt, were the linchpins of our achievement. Lily wasn't just a co-author or a friend, she was the beacon that guided us through every storm, the architect of our dreams, and the cornerstone of our success. Her spirit, resilience, and boundless creativity infused our project with life, turning what once seemed an insurmountable task into a shared victory.
It's clear to me now, more than ever, that this first million dollars isn't just a testament to our hard work, it's a tribute to Lily's extraordinary influence and the profound impact she's had on both our story and my life. Her partnership has been the greatest gift, transforming every obstacle into an opportunity and every dream into reality.